I have had this really cool military grade control box that I've been wanting to use for 10 years. I really want to use it to control something. In this video, I'm finally going to put it to use. I'm going to attach a wireless transmitter and I'm going to send some signals to a receiver that then is going to power some DC motors. I'm going to walk through the prototyping process, electronic selection, soldering and building this thing, programming it, some 3D design, actually assembling the controller, doing some connection testing, and then I'm going to show off a fun proof of concept wirelessly controlled wheeled chassis. Stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. All right, anytime I start a project, I like to uh, have a little process I go through. I like to draw it out, kind of list some stuff about it, and then make some specifications. And then I got yeah, I like to prune all that stuff off. So I'll fast forward this and just kind of get to the, uh, the details here. All right, so I've uh, drawn this thing out here. Basically, this is the controller, so that's uh, this thing right here. And then I want to have, I'm going to have to have like some type of microcontroller connected to it that's going to read the signals. You know, when I move this stuff, it'll read the signals. That's going to have to have a battery. And then I'll have a transmitter and a receiver. So the receiver will be on that wheeled box, I guess, cardboard box, right? And then uh, the receiver is going to be connected to uh, another microcontroller you know, an Arduino, very likely, some type of Arduino compatible board. And if, if you don't know what Arduino is, we got a video called uh, What is Arduino? You can check that out. It'll, it'll talk to you about what that is. The wheeled thing, you know, this, I need to come up with like a cool name for this thing, but wheeled box is going to need a battery supply, obviously, right? And then I'm going to have to, I'm going to get a motor controller for the motors that will speak to the uh, microcontroller. And then, you know, just these hobby motors right there. I think that's like the components I need. I might be missing something here. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to have to be thinking about this. But so then what I do once I've like drawn it, you know, I kind of list out just in words all this stuff. I think I got everything covered here. You can see I'm just really like fast and loose with this. I'm really not too. It's just trying to get my ideas out here. But on a lot of these specifications, this is where it's like that here. I just list out what the thing is, right? Like the controller. That's again, this thing, right? or the, the transmitter and the receiver, that's the transmitter and the receiver. But over here, I try to get a little more specific about what this stuff is. Um, like, what am I actually going to buy or what am I going to use? And, um, you know, I'm drawing blanks on a couple of these things. I'm not sure what type of transmitter or receiver I want to use. So I, I definitely need to do some research. So I was looking around trying to find what I had for like radio frequency stuff, you know, and like I was thinking, I just want some short range thing, you know, like you'd use for a remote control car or whatever. But... I could have swore I had some somewhere, but I don't know. I found this stuff. This is like for, I mean, this is like long range, right? Long range radio. I don't, I don't know. These are cool little, I got these after talking to a guy. See, look at this board. Isn't that sweet? It's got a built-in LCD on it. I don't know. Maybe I should just use this, but I don't know. This looks really cool. It's built by this health tech company. It even comes with these cool, look at this sweet case. Like, right, at least I think that's pretty cool. You know, it'd like fit in there. Anyway, I want to use these, but I was like, man, I just want some short range stuff. And I'm like, so still looking around. Then I came across this box. It's like, I just buy random crap sometimes, I guess. And then I was like, oh, well, hey, maybe this will work. Well, this is just stuff from Adafruit and guess what it is. It's like long range radio stuff, you know, like it's like this, uh, what is it? It's an RFM 9X Adafruit Feather MO radio, Laura radio module. So it's like the same thing, another long range thing. I'm like, what? I can't find any short range stuff. I don't necessarily feel like buying some short range stuff, either though I, I think it'd probably be a better solution. So I'm just gonna try, I think I'm gonna try this Adafruit stuff, throw it together and we'll see what happens. I mean, like maybe I could control stuff from, you know, I don't know, half a click away, that'd be kind of cool.
So apparently when I bought this stuff, I thought I bought like a cool antenna looking thing, but um, I bought a bunch of different antennas, I guess, but I bought a 2.4 gigahertz antenna when I was supposed to be getting a 915 megahertz antenna. So uh, yeah, and I bought like this cool edge connector looking thing, but uh, like I said, I, I could use that for a different antenna, but I just, I got two of these simple spring antennas that, you know, I have two, so I might as well connect them, so I'm not going to use this edge connector, but, oh well, it happens. So I connected the board, and I want to be able to see the board. You know, I was thinking I'd just be able to go to uh, Boards Manager, but uh, what you see here is based on, like, getting the most up-to-date ones. You got to go into uh, Preferences right here, Arduino, Preferences. And you can basically add uh, board manager URLs. So this, right, what URLs you put in here is going to pull information and it's going to populate that list. So you can see I have some for like the ESP32. Uh, and this is just a comma separated list, right? So I just put a comma there and then I'm pulling this URL from the Arduino web or from the Adafruit website. Just copy in this URL. I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to hit OK. And now I have a feeling I'm going to have to restart the Arduino IDE, but let's see if, if those show up now. Boards, Board Manager. All right, so what I'm going to do, all right, so this is downloading the platform index. But before, I wasn't seeing any, like, Adafruit board options here. And I'm going to just see if I can, let's see, Adafruit. Oh, yeah, here we go. So here it is, Adafruit AV. I didn't have to restart. So... I'm going to go ahead and install this, and then I should be able to see, yeah, this is this Adafruit Feather 32U4. What the board I'm using is a version of that, so I'll go ahead and click install. Close that out, and now maybe this is the point I'll have to, you know, open and close the Arduino IDE. So I'm just going to tools, then I'm going to board, Adafruit boards. All right, there we go. I think this is the one I want, uh, Adafruit Feather 32U4. That's it. All right, so I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to go to Tools, and I want to get the right port. So I'm pretty sure this is it, because it's the only Arduino board I have plugged in right now. I think I've got... Sometimes I just have a ton plugged in. I forget what's what. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so I got that. Now, what I'm going to do, I just want to make sure that I got the thing actually, like, working. I am going to make an assumption here that's probably wrong, but... There's probably an LED on this thing somewhere at pin 13. So I'm just going to see if I can upload. Let's see. I'm going to go to examples, basic, blink. And I'm just going to try. This is what I call a smoke test, right? I'm just going to try to uh, see if I can upload this and make sure that I'm actually talking to this board. All right. So let me go ahead and click upload. It says it's uploading. Oh, man. AVR, dude getting up in my business all right so now what i'm going to try i'm going to try holding this reset button and then I'll, I'll upload let's see i don't know maybe i tried this already but i'm going to do it again all right i'm holding that reset button I'll let go now it's going into that nice little thing now i'm going to upload i ain't liking that all right programmer is not responding yeah i just like to press buttons I, this cable, I got a feeling this cable might be no good. I don't know. All right. Well, if you ever feel stuck, don't don't feel alone. It happens to me all the time. I'm sure it happens to all of us, right? So, and you know, I guess that's just part of the process. Anyway, so here's what I realized. You know, AVR dude was giving me trouble, like it always does. AVR dude. Anyway, so I restarted my Arduino IDE. Okay, and then what I found was that I had actually selected the. I was selecting this USB serial. Serial. So. I, I probably do have another, you'd think I'd know, but my wires are, anyway, this is the right board to select. So I'm going to select that one and then just double check. Yep. Okay. So now that's all go. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go to this blink sketch again. Examples, basics, blink. Here she is. Verify. Upload. Uh, let's see. Okay, now that's looking good. It's on and it's off. Now it was blinking way faster before, so now I can like thumbs up, you know, like sweet. Um, I got the smoke test done. All right, let's move on. All right, like I said, I, I like to do this as incremental as possible. 
So this is usually the first thing I do when I'm trying to work with a board. All right, so after messing around for quite a bit, longer than I thought I'd have to, I got it working. I got two separate boards talking together. One is the breakout bird board for the, uh, it's like a RF95, and then the other one is the feather using the uh, U32. Anyway, long story short, it took me a while, but right now I've got the breakout board connected to a Arduino Mega, and that is connected to, you know, USB to my computer, and that's set up as the receiver. And the other board, I've been playing around with how far away I can take it. Right now it's downstairs in my foyer, and uh, it's they still seem to be communicating. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to test how far away I can put that, but... Um, I don't know. It's been an interesting journey to try to get this right. I think my biggest uh, difficulty was just getting, making sure I had the right code, uh, the right pinouts correct and everything like that. It was a little more, I don't know, a little more challenging, but of course, you know, like I'm, uh, I'm easily challenged. So a hey, par for the course. Anyway, one thing I'm realizing is like, I probably should use something more appropriate for this design, right? Cause I'm like, the idea is that I'm a con control, a remote controlled car. Why would I be using like a long range radio to do that. That just doesn't make any sense, but that's what I have here. I'm having fun playing around with this stuff. So I'm just going to keep pursuing this route and uh, see where it goes. All right, let's keep chugging. Who knows? Let's see how this turns out. Yeah. So I'm not like, you know, uh, 3d dude, son of a, doesn't that look, is it me or does that look, that looks like an oval. I don't know. Okay. Look, you're that. And then I do this. 1.75, and then I do two. Okay, I should, hey, sweet. All right. Yeah, um, you know, it's like I'm new to this whole 3D printing thing. I've been just doing a bunch of trial runs because I'm apparently not that good at measuring. And like what I think is the right size when it actually prints seems not quite right. So I'm, that's why I've had to keep playing with these, but. Oh man, some of these breadboards that you get, they just are horrible. It just won't fit in, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh man, I'm hurting my fingers. And on top of it, I got that greatest showman song stuck in my head, never again, or never enough, never, never. You know, it's like, jeez, crappy breadboards. Good music though, I love that song. I couldn't find a connection for this. So what I did is I 3D printed this thing thing that like yeah i know Not, i can't say i'm the best 3d print. anyway okay so it fits like this and then i was thinking i could somehow use this to mount the the box that'll hold the you know like the transmitter stuff anyway so then i have like these things uh and it, the spacing doesn't work out maybe i could try to make the spacing work out though maybe that's what i'll do anyway and then the idea is i could push those in and then just use these what i was going to do was I pulled one of those out, you know, one of these pins, and I was going to, like, stick the pin down in there. Uh, and then I was thinking, like, yeah, I think it'll be easier just to cut this, and then, okay, that's what I'm going to try. Okay, so I've got this controller and now I'm trying to figure out like what the heck when I when I do this stuff, you know, turn buttons and flip stuff, like what happens down at these pins? There's nine pins here. And so I'm trying to figure out like I thought maybe I'd magically be able to intuit like what is going on, but uh, I can't, you know, I'm just not magical like that, darn it. So anyway, what I'm doing is right now I'm going to just go through and test every single one of the pins to every other pin, make a little matrix and then see if there's like continuity, right? So I'll like check and see if when I turn it a certain way is continuity come up or whatever maybe this is like already figured out you know I'm sure it's already figured out and I just I don't know anyway this ought to be interesting let's give it a shot 
All right. Well, I just went through all these, uh, measuring them with the multimeter to see if there was a connection. So I basically connect one pin here, one pin here, and I made this table, right? Pins versus pins. So I connected pin one to pin two, moved the stuff around in all these different positions, and uh, I came up with this graph. So like, you know, these arrows represent like the little joystick thing, and um, it was kind of fun to do. Actually, it didn't take me as long as I thought. And uh, so you can see like, you know, certain connections indicate certain directions. And then the uh, this switch right here, when it's in the up position, it connects pins seven and pin six. And then the uh, master on switch here, when that's in the on position, it connects pin eight and pin nine. Anyway, details, details, details. But given this, uh, oh shucks, I should be able to um, come up with some code that is gonna translate all this into commands that I can send to the receiver. So I'm I'm feeling pretty hopeful right now. We'll see how this gets dashed and destroyed to reality, but uh, I'm gonna go with it. All right, I'm, uh, I gotta tell you, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so what I usually do if I'm trying to like, when I'm putting code together, like, you know, I had that other sketch where I had the uh, communication working, but I just went to a completely new sketch because what I'm trying to figure out now is like this control stuff, right? And instead of trying to like add the control stuff to that other sketch, what I prefer to do is just start with a brand new sketch, just figure out the control stuff, right? I don't have any other thing I'm trying to work about. And then once I can figure out the control stuff, you know, then I will merge it into the other thing, right? So like this way, I'm not dealing with multiple unknowns, you know, because like I, I got a small brain, I get confused really quick. So I try to keep everything as uh, just incremental as possible, right? So basically what I did is I wrote some code that's just printing some stuff out to the serial monitor, right? And this is basically the joystick, all right? So I, I have all these pins. Uh, I have the pins set up as uh, input pull-ups, right? So all the pins on here are reading a high state, right? until I turn them one direction or another, and then it's reading a different state. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can get this thing to work right now. You know, who knows if it would work? Let's see. Let me clear this. So if I press up, I should see a zero at the top. Let's see that. Okay, see, I got a zero at the top, sweet. Now I'm gonna let go, it goes back to one. Now, if I press left, I should see a zero on the left. Let me do that. Okay, there's my zero, sweet. Do you see that? All right, now I'm gonna press right. I think you get the picture and I'm going to press down or yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Now what I got to do is figure out how to like, you know, I'm probably going to get these buttons in here working. I haven't figured that out quite yet. And then what I'll do is I'll send this commands somehow over to the receiver, which is then it can get control that super awesome car. Well, you know what I mean? Cool. Progress. All right. Making a little bit of progress. So I got, it seems like now I can transmit like direction to this, right? So if I, let me open up the serial monitor window real quick here. Okay. So if I push up, it should say for, or if I push forward, it should say forward again. I am the serial monitor is reading this, uh, 18 mega, right? Um, not this right here. If I push down, it's saying backward, or if I push backward, if I go left, it's saying left. And if I go right, it's saying right. So that's pretty cool. So transmitting, um, let's see if I, I take this battery, I'm gonna plug this battery in. Uh, I mean, this nothing should change here, but I'm gonna just unplug this. All right, I should expect a little reboot here, right? But let's see if this keeps working. I'm just gonna clear the output. Okay, so, for, good. All right, still working. All right, back, yep. Okay, left and right, sweet. Okay, so this is just on battery power. Got this, so now the next step is to uh, set up the motor control in, uh, on this so that when I do this, you know, it does the appropriate motor stuff. So cool. All right, let's go for it. Are you ever sure you have something and then you just can't find it? Well, I was sure I had one of these just laying around like, you know, in the wild. Well, I couldn't find it. So I had to open up this thing. And of course, like it looked like it was like, I don't know, underwater for three years, you know, like at a shipwreck, like I sunk anyway all the batteries were just 
nasty. And then when I was like trying to clean it out, I accidentally threw these screws into the trash and I had to like dig through my trash. I was like, man, just find that, whatever. Anyway, got a battery pack and now I got to uh, hook this up. That should be enough. Okay, I know, I'm just complaining, but hey. Cool, all right, well, I uh, hooked up these uh, motors to a uh, L29 3D. It's like a motor driver, essentially. Uh, I just had one in a kit I found. I wanted to use like a shield, but I, I was using some pins that weren't gonna work with the motor shield. Anyway, okay, so I uh, got the motors hooked up. Yes, this is the most ghetto box. I know, you don't have to remind me. Uh, and then I've got these, uh, got this hooked up. All right. So this has got, this is on the battery. I'm using the battery pack to power the, uh, mega and, you know, with V in, right. And then it's also powering, it's also the source for the, uh, the motor driver chip. All right. So now check it out again. This is not, nothing's plugged in. This is all just wireless, right? So forward. And when I let go, all right, little. Let's see. Like, yeah, okay. That's backwards. Should be left. And right. Yeah, sweet. So it's good. Look, so all I gotta do is throw this in there, and I should be have should have this uh kind of set up. We'll see. It's on some stuff. Yeah, well, this whole box robot thing uh, wasn't quite uh, up to par. It just the motors would like bind against the side because the stuff on the inside was heavy. So I'm just scrapping this. It's it's not worth. You got to kick it too much. All right, well, I mean, I move forward and back and left and right, but uh, it's not perfect. Sometimes it kind of just goes off on its own, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, here's here's my takeaway from this. I, I'm happy because I figured out like the pinout for this controller. So I'm like, okay, hey, that's a win. Um, did I hook up these on off buttons, these switches? No, I didn't, but like maybe I will in the future. Uh, the other thing for me that was a win was just using this like long range radio as wrong as it is. Like, why would I use a long range radio in this situation? It just doesn't make any sense, but it's like, it's just kind of what I had on, on hand. So I used it, you know, I got to learn a little bit how to use it. Now, am, the code I wrote, you know, for it is like embarrassing. It just, I just took it and threw it together as fast as I can, just because I wanted to get something like up and working. I'm going to call this a proof of concept, you know? So I don't know. Do you ever do stuff like this? Like you just want to try to kind of figure stuff out, whether it looks beautiful in the end. I mean, gosh, my robot looks like Frankenstein there. It's like, it's not, it's not a pretty, not a pretty little robot, but I don't know. For me, it was, uh, it was about the fun of learning. I love learning stuff and uh, I'm going to call it a win. Hey, those are my takeaways. If you want to learn more about all this Arduino programming stuff, make sure to check out our training program at programmingelectronics.com. Also, before you go, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to get more videos like this. Leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts about this video. And as always, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.